Hello everybody, my name is Aiden and welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly where we take a deeper dive of the previous week for the Chicago Bulls, discuss the positives and the negatives and look forward to the week ahead for this Bulls team. At the end of the day, a lot of this week I spent away from the Chicago Bulls for the most part in all honesty. Yes, I did do some of the watch-alongs. I think I did every watch-along in all fairness, but my mind wasn't really on the Bulls in all honesty. Um, it was something where I could take my mind off of it pretty easily. You know, if we lost, okay. If we won, great. And we move on. Now that I'm back in my own environment, we can pay a little bit more attention about the Bulls. So I don't necessarily have everything figured out, but we're just going to get through it and discuss what we need to discuss in this video. But before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Bulls and, of course, the week previously and the week ahead. Again, I think it's very important right now for this Bulls team to keep on looking ahead because it's very, very easy to get stuck in the past. And we had some very bad performances this week, in all honesty. Uh, but with that being said, with the games that we've played, let's quickly start off with the Dallas Mavericks game. And we ended up losing this game in embarrassing fashion, 127-92. to um, this is one of the worst losses of the seasons. There is no real excuse or any reason to suggest otherwise. This game absolutely sucked, and I'm not necessarily very happy, even till now, with this Bulls performance. Uh, we started off poorly, and we never really came back. Now, this game is prone to happen every now and then, with any team. You just come off the gates, and you start really slow. You never really feel into it. It sucks that it happened at home. We had a fantastic West Coast trip, and it sucks that we came back to the United Center and produce that type of performance away from uh, uh, at home. It, it's disgusting from that point of view, but it does happen. So it's something I'm going to move on from, but probably something I'm not going to forget for a while, in all honesty. Let's move to, obviously, this game against the Indiana Pacers. And this one was a thriller in every sense of the word. We won this game 120, 132 to 129 in an overtime performance. I mean, there were some things that happened here that I simply can't explain. The DeMar DeRozan shot was just sensational, in all honesty. Of course, this was also the game that Kobe White got injured in. But DeMar DeRozan really carried us out of the overtime game. Really carried us out in the fourth quarter. Guys like Ayo and Vucevic stepped up in big moments when we needed them. And this is a must-win game considering the fact the Pacers are still ahead of us in the standings. But they are the sixth seed at the moment. They are still further ahead. They're really far away from us in all fairness. But this does allow us to get closer to the rivals um, underneath them, which is the Philadelphia 76ers and the Miami Heat. And look, if there's any chance that we're going to walk out of this situation with a positive result and a positive, you know, climbing of the standings, these are the type of wins you need to have. Philadelphia is dropping more and more by the second. They could potentially find themselves out of the second chance opportunity in the playing tournament. I really feel like if there's any chance for the Bulls to climb ahead, we have to keep relying on Philly to fail. But beating the Pacers is a very big result for the Bulls. And then we turn to the next game against that, and it was it was against the LA Clippers. Uh, and we ended up losing this game. Let me quickly get it up here. 126 to 111. Uh, this game had no James Harden in it, unfortunately, for the Clippers, but that didn't seem to be a big deal as they kind of really dominated. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were just absolutely unbelievable, barely missing any shots. The Clippers team in general was super efficient, while the Bulls struggled with their efficiency. That was the key in the win and the loss in that game. We've lost twice to the Clippers this season. And obviously, the last game against the, uh, the Wizards, we did pretty comfortably here. We won this game 127-98. to One of the bigger blowouts we've had this entire season. We're not we're not often accustomed to blowout performances in all honesty, but it was still nice to see. Uh, and I would like to see more of them, but we don't have that much time left to really say anything of that nature. So th that was the week for the Bulls. It was up and down, lefts and rights. Um, you know, it, it was a very average week. And I I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't think average right now is good enough for the Bulls. We need to see more than average. We need to see above average if we're going to really make a claim for the 8th seed or the 7th seed this season. So, with all that being said, I know it's a bit upsetting to go average, but we have to look forward. There are games that are winnable ahead of us, and it's up to us to really execute in that way. So, we'll wait and see how the Bulls do next week. But let's look at the awards, the must improve, the six man of the week, and the player of the week, and the defensive player of the week for the Bulls. There is a lot to get into here. Now, keep in mind, these might not be the most accurate, I guess, 
you know, awards given because, again, my mind's not really been on the Bulls, but I'm going to try my absolute best here. Now, the must improve tends to be the hardest one to give always because there's always a player that does well, then plays don't do well and stuff of that nature. But I do have a target in mind here. And it's because in the two games that he played, I think offensively he's done fantastic for the Bulls, in all honesty. A great game against the Wizards. He did some really good clutch work against the Pacers. But I actually am going to give my muscle proof to Nikola Vucevic. The reason why, I think he got absolutely destroyed defensively this week. He's definitely far from my defensive player of the week. The Dallas Mavericks game, I thought was a joke from both centers, in Andre Drummond and in Nikola Vucevic. I thought it was an absolute joke. The fact that the Dallas Mavericks centers were willing to put in a shift and outrun our Bulls centers pretty effortlessly and both get 20 points respectively is something I have not seen before. Probably won't see again. And it was just a disgusting night from both of them. Vucevic couldn't guard a pick and roll to save his life. He couldn't get back on defense to save his life. Luka Doncic picked up every single pass he could to the centers. And they just, they just simply outworked our players. And that is disgusting. Then obviously, the last game, the game against the Pacers, he got destroyed there as well defensively. A lot of pick and pops. A lot of runs to the rim. He simply couldn't guard it very well. And that really hurt this Bulls team again. If we were able to stop Miles Turner from putting in six or seven threes on the night and beating Vucevic off the dribble, we might have won this game comfortably. But at the end of the day, it was a bit of a meal to get out of that type of game. You know, it, it was work. It was hard work to kind of build yourself out of a player that's struggling on the defensive end. And that was Vucevic against the Pacers. So... He's my must improve today. I think we need to see a better defensive display. But that also goes down to coaching. We have to know his weaknesses. We need to stop switching him onto guards. And we need to try to work around his weakness. And that is the defensive end. Other teams seem to do it well. The Bulls don't. We expose it more than we actually hide it. So that's something that sucks to see. My sixth man of the week. Granted, I just roasted him a little bit for the lack of defense, but it has to be Andre Drummond. I can't find anyone that is consistently doing better than Andre Drummond off the bench at the moment. I think Javon Carter's had a solid week, but Tim in some areas have had has had a solid week. But Andre Drummond, in my opinion, is the more consistent guy. And he's had a really bad week. I'll be honest. It's hard to give the sixth man of the week because our bench unit is mainly starting. You know, guys like Caruso or guys like Toy Craig that are in the starting lineup right now are the guys you expect to be winning the Sixth Man of the Week award, but so many injuries are piled on that that bench has to become the starters, and now our bench is really, really lacking in depth and quality, especially with now Julian Phillips being out indefinitely. So that sucks to see. My Defensive Player of the Week... Um, I'm probably going to have to stick with Alex Caruso here. Again, a pretty basic answer, I know. But I felt like he did some massive things this week again. He seems to always have that game where he just stuns you defensively. Uh, it doesn't make, it maybe it doesn't happen every game for you guys, but it happens a lot. And then my player of the week, I'm going to give to DeMar DeRozan. I think Ayo DeSumo is also in competition with this, but I really like DeRozan's game. I know he had a really bad game against the Wizards, but he didn't really need to have a good game. And I thought he was the only one that really helped carry us out of that Clippers game, even though we got destroyed. Now let's look to what's ahead. The first game is against the Portland Trail Blazers in a couple of hours' time. A must-win game. Very injury riddled Portland team. A very injury riddled Bulls team. I do believe Portland can surprise us. It's a trap game, but we should, and hopefully we will win. The next game after that is against the Houston Rockets. Um, another game and another team that I consider a bogey team. We don't do very well against the Rockets more time than not. I think we versed them and beat them this season, but it was a very difficult game. And I think it was a game we had to come back from because I felt like Houston had our number for most of that game. Then obviously we got Boston. Good luck with that one, ladies and gentlemen. Boston has blown us out of the water in the two times that we faced them. This is the last time we will be facing them. Maybe we can expect a better result. Hey, look, we get out of the playing tournament. Boston is the team we're going to be facing. Going to give you a spoiler alert right there. So, a win against Boston might give us some confidence we can make it a competitive series. But if we get destroyed again, I don't know how many people actually want to see the Bulls get into the playoffs just to get destroyed by them in the playoffs. So, a nice, strong message and a strong game against them could be very helpful. But that's going to be me for today. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow. And or subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you in the next Bulls related video. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.